Brothers and sisters, we welcome you to today's edition of our daily broadcast. By His grace, we completed the Great Commission yesterday, and the video was released, the teaching note to be released. And so for those in the master class, we've come to the end of that course. So the next thing is for you to do the uh, course feedback. What did you receive from it? You write an essay of one page and submit to the director of studies. And after that, you do the cost impact assessment. For those doing the yes cost is same principles. And for those of you who are learning right here with us on Facebook, just write an essay on what this course was to you. And, and, and also post it at the bottom of the last lesson, which is lesson 14. We're grateful to the Father. Before we start the next course, which is course 118, the call cost and reward of discipleship, the Lord impressed on our heart, it is needful that the trainings we did in asymmetric spiritual warfare, we did it in the group of Global Prayer Task Force to combat, I mean to degrade and eliminate coronavirus, so the circulation was limited, it was from there we began the concept of the spiritual cabinet, so the Lord says now that he has brought clarity about the spiritual cabinet and the work it will do across the world, he says, these few days before the next call, the Lord wants us to dwell on what the spiritual cabinet is all about. What is it? What is the mission? So that you can be open, and if Holy Spirit impresses on you that you ought to be part of those who will be praying for those in authority, whether in the natural authority, or in the public sphere, governmental sphere, or uh, spiritual leaders, including leaders of IMF, uh, also, whether the Lord will use you to deal with the foundation of your city and state, pray for your governor, pray for those in authority. The Lord wants uh, a kind of exposition of this concept he brought forth. And so we're going to do that in these few days. Let's see what will happen. Remember, on Thursday by 10 p.m. London time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Central time, and 11 p.m. South African time, we're going to be launching the spiritual cabinet on Zoom. And we ask you, if the Lord leads you, come alongside and we're going to have a great time together. This is the assignment of our generation because the Lord is going to use this assignment to clear the way for evangelism, clear the way for reaching out everything that is distorting the destiny of nations and cities, you know, deal with thrones and deal with those sitting on them from a non-partisan but kingdom point of view. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we look up to you. Without you, we can do nothing. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings your counsel to us. And even now we pray for illumination in the world. Grant us understanding and, and Lord, do what only you can do that we will operate with light together. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to title this presentation on the prayer and spiritual cabinet. Lesson one is the exalted kingdom church. The exalted kingdom church. I want to focus on it maybe today or tomorrow. You know why? The Lord said to me that everything in life derives from understanding of identity. If as a Christian, you don't see yourself the way the Lord sees you. If you allow people to define you, people who do not know you in the spirit, and they are defining you by your past, they are defining you by your family foundation and all those things, you will never be able to go into your assignment. So the Lord wants us to start with understanding the identity of this church, and we're going to take it slowly. We're not going to rush it. Whatever we're able to cover in these three, four, five lessons, as the case may be, will equip every one of us to understand when you hear spiritual cabinet, you know what it's all about. So, our beginning in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1, the prophet asks a question, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Listen to this. These two things are connected. If you believe the report of the Lord concerning who we are, the arm of the Lord will be revealed. And if the arm of the Lord is revealed, who can withstand the church? So there are two pictures of the church that confront us. Number one is what the enemy wants us to see and focus on. He wants us to see and focus on a weak, 
divided, sin-prone, ineffective church that is of the world. Is of the world. Worldly. Pursues the same thing as the world. Religious organizations, he wants us to see ourselves as religious organizations that are perpetually at war with each other for increased membership. If I'm looking for a member, you're looking for a member where is strife. You see, we got to understand that that's part of the game Satan played to the church in the fourth century. He created a paradigm that is false, a paradigm that took away the biblical paradigm. Men and brethren, there are a number of churches that we will find. And this one, Satan wants us to focus on, you find them among the church of Satan, where Satan gives power to people to use to do things that wazzle others, bewitch other people, and trap their souls for the sake of, you know, making money or whatever. And in, in, in any case, they're not going anywhere. They're going to end up with Satan forever because you can't dine with the table of the Lord and dine in the table of Satan. Then there is the church of humans, where human beings by the ambition of established churches and they want to use it to make money, make fame, make this thing. And what they are teaching has nothing to do with the Bible. They cherry pick scriptures to preach what they want to preach. And then there is a religious church. Born again is inside it. Spirit field is inside it. However, because of the covering cast of religiosity and religious concepts, the religious church is unable to function in the fullness of the identity because he doesn't understand the identity. In fact, he doesn't even want to hear that identity. The religious church will, don't, doesn't mind hearing, okay, the Lord is coming, so let's fold our hands. Let's just keep ourselves from sin so that when he comes, we find our, our spotless. And that's all. He doesn't understand that there is a work to be done on earth other than in increased membership, ABC churchianity, attendance, building cash. So, brothers and sisters, these three are not what we are discussing. We're not talking about church of Satan. We're not talking about church of humans. We're not talking about the religious church that is powerless. The religious church that, you know, knows a few things about the end, uh, the age to come, about heaven, but doesn't know about the work of the church on this side of eternity. We are talking about another church, the fourth type. The church we're going to be discussing about is the church of Yeshua, Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, very God, very man. If you are one of those who believe the Aryan uh, issue that Jesus is not God, you are part of the human church, not the church of Yeshua. If you are part of those who believe in the pseudo kingdom, where the kingdom is more important and should be preached, not Jesus, not Yeshua, then you've missed the road. We're not talking about that. We are talking about the church that Yeshua Hamashiach bettered by his blood, the one he left on earth, the one he asked the Father in John 17 and said, Father, please, I'm not asking you to take away my church. I have work to do. I have started the work. Now I'm handed over the baton to the church to continue the work until it is finished. Preserve them from the spirit of the age. Keep them away from the spirit of the age. Lord, help them to fulfill. I'm talking about that church. He paid his price in blood for. The church that he himself established by his blood. The church he himself activated by Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The one he said he would build and is based on his identity as very God, very man. Why is it important? You need to understand the context of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. When Yeshua came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Son of Man, Son of Mary, Son of Joseph, Brother of Joseph, Brother of James, Brother of Jude, Brother of his sisters, at least two of them. Who do people say I am? And he said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. This is what the other disciples began to say to him. Then in verse 15, he asked them the pointed question. But unto them, but he said unto them, But whom say you? You have been with me for some time now. Who do you see me to be? Identity precedes everything. 
If you don't have an understanding of the identity of Yeshua, you cannot participate in this project. If you are close to his identity, you cannot participate in this project. This project is for those who believe what Peter believed. Verse 17 and verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Messiah, which the Greek called Christos, which is called the Anointed One, and which the English language calls the Christ. Thou art the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of the Living Elohim. How would Elohim have a son? Luke 1 35 tells us from verse 29 to 35, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. The Holy Spirit planted him in the womb of Mary. So it's, Peter got a revelation that this person they had ate with, drank with, slept with, you know, you know, when he's tired, he sleeps and the rest, and they rode the boats. That this is not ordinary man. This is the incarnation of Elohim in the earth rim. Very Elohim, very man. And verse 17, Yeshua said and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Peter. Blessed, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you. But my Father which is in heaven, brothers and sisters, nobody can receive Yeshua in his identity except by revelation. You don't get it by Sunday school cramming your head. It's by revelation. you got to get it. There are people who have been ministers for 20 years, 15 years, 30 years. They've not got the revelation of the divinity of Yeshua. They are still struggling. They can't handle Mormons. They can't handle Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to, to, to shake them up. They are not able because they've not caught the revelation. And brothers and sisters, if you've not caught the revelation, go and do the first work. Because you can't represent somebody you don't know. You can't represent a stranger. Ambassadors are off to go and ask all ambassadors. The American ambassador to the court of St. James, which is, you know, uh, Buckingham Palace, the American ambassador to Germany, those key nations of the world, go and check out. These are people who have the confidence of the president himself because they are representing him. So also, you cannot represent the father if you don't know who the Yeshua is. Whatever representation will be weak. And if you have that understanding, if you have that revelation, then you can go forth knowing that what promise was made to Peter is also made to you. Because what he says to one, he says to all. He answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona. If you walk in the revelation of the divinity of Yeshua, you are blessed already. No man can curse you. For flesh and blood are not revealed unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Then he now came to the zinga. Verse 18 and 19. 18 says, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, upon this rock. It wasn't talking about Peter. As the church of Rome tells us, it was talking about Peter. He built the church on Peter. No, he built the church on that revelation. That revelation is identity. Because the king of the kingdom, he is the center and circumference of the kingdom. The kingdom is his. The glory is his. The power is his. The might is his. So he says, you know what? You are Peter. Upon this rock, that revelation is a rock. Once you catch that revelation, you are standing on rock. You are standing on solid ground. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Yeshua is building his own church upon the revelation of his identity. So when we're talking about the spiritual cabinet, we're talking about the church that Yeshua is building in the nations of the world, across the world, standing upon the revelation of his identity as God and man, as Elohim and man. Upon the revelation, I'll build my church. Then he made another promise. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church that Yeshua is building upon that identity. He's not talking about denomination. That's why this spiritual cabinet, we're not saying this IMF spiritual cabinet or Arise spiritual cabinet or Global School of Mrs. No, it is the prayer spiritual cabinet. It's for all those who redeemed by the blood, who understand and accept the identity of Yeshua, wherever they may be, how many they may be, they are open to participate, networks, but made as many networks in a, a country, in a city, as wish to participate, they will participate. This is not a denominated vision. You cannot denominate the kingdom. 
You cannot. The nomination it will be to depreciate the value of the king and his kingdom. He says the gates of hell shall not prevail, meaning that Satan and his cohorts, his evil kingdom, will know that this church is strong, is powerful. This church is part of Yeshua, and they will try to come against it. But we heard a sure word of promise that the gates of hell shall not prevail. There are a lot of people who are not praying and who are not waging spiritual warfare because they've been told if you pray, or if you wage spiritual warfare, Satan will come and take you and make me see, miss me of you. Listen to these brothers and sisters. That's baloney. All you need to know is that if you are going to pray this prayer, you can't do it with a heart of sin. We can't do it with a heart filled with loss, filled with covetousness, filled with unforgiveness, filled with iniquity, filled with anger, malice, offense, because those things are going to give Satan legal right to creep in to smite you. So we got to understand. He says... I will be my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. They will come against, but not will succeed. Hey, he said, associate yourself together. The Lord said to the powers of darkness, but not by me. Whosoever shall come against you shall fall for your sake. This is the promise of the Lord. And it doesn't matter how many principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this age that are in your city, that are in your state, that are in your nation, they cannot prevail against the church of Yeshua Hamashiach because the church is founded on a guarantee. And the guarantee is sure and certain. And believe the report of the Lord. He says it shall not prevail. They will come, but they will not prevail. And he brought another zinger in verse 19. Matthew 16, 19. And I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with those keys, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is awesome. Awesome. You know, these are part of the check we are not cashing. The kingdom check we are supposed to catch with faith. That even young people, once you are the age of revelation, 9 years, 10, 11, and you know things and you can make decisions about salvation from that day, we should be taught the keys of the kingdom. Why do we go to Sunday school to teach people a thousand and one things they cannot use when there are things they can use in school, they can use in their workplaces, which we need to teach them? You know, it says... Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be losing in heaven. Do you know that this is awesome? These are part of the things we've left. And that's why Christians are going to quarreling and backbiting and gossip and all manner of things. And even Christians give themselves over to Satan to use to destroy congregations they are part of through gossip and backbiting to destroy networks they are part of through all kinds of evil behavior. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling his church in the earth dream. And the church is bigger than you. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than anyone. The church is us. The church is we. The church is our. The church, he says, look at what he's saying. There are five things that are specific the Lord has promised his church, his own kingdom church, that he wants us to begin to lay hold of. Number one, upon the reality of understanding of revelation of his kingdom, revelation of his kingship, revelation of his divinity, he will build his church. So he will build his church of people. It doesn't matter whether they are Chinese or Russians or Germans or French or Americans or South Americans or Latinos or Africans. It doesn't matter the background. Once you catch this revelation of his divinity, you know what? And you submit to it by, you know, looking at yourself, seeing how you are convicted by Holy Spirit and you confess your sin, repent of it and ask him for mercy. Upon that, you become part of his church. That's how he builds his church. Number two, he promises us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, all that Satan will do to crush his church will not succeed. Number three, his church will receive and operate with keys of the kingdom. Now, someone will ask, what are those keys? Now, let me give you a few. There are some others. Number one is the authority of his name. Yeshua said, in my name. You approach the Father in my name. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. 
The authority of the name of Yeshua is a key to heaven. Heaven responds to that name. The earth ring receives the response to that name. The marine wall responds to that name. The Leviathan that is in the, in the waters, Leviathan responds. And all those marine spirits, you know, the people of the pristine nations of the world, you know, we call it primitive nations, they understand the marine world more than us. So most of us have been blinded because we have everything we need. They know what they call marine water. The demons, the, the demons that operate from the realm of the spirit in the in the water wall. They know their kingdoms right there on the seas. They know that. And the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, from verse 9. Because he's a highly exalted, the Father has given him a name that's above all names. That in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, every knee shall bow, whether of things in heaven. Yes. In the third heaven, the four living creatures bow at that name. The four and twenty others bow at that name. The innumerable company of angels bow at that name. In the first and second heavens, where there are demonic powers, principles and powers, at that name, they bow. On earth, they bow. In the waters, they bow. In hell, they bow. Because he snatched out the key of hell and death from Satan on the day of resurrection successfully. So that name is still our legal access to the heavenlies. And when that's why the Lord doesn't want us to use that name in vain. Use it for joke. You hit your foot against him. You say, Jesus, you are cooking your soup and you are Facebooking with your friend and the food begins to burn. Jesus. Everything Jesus. When you are doing that, you are reducing the potency of that name. You are cheapening that name because you are bringing it into realm of things that are within your capacity to handle. It's within your capacity that when you are cooking, you don't do Facebooking, lest it's carried away. It's within your capacity that when you are cooking, you don't do WhatsApp, lest you be carried away. It's within your capacity that when you are walking, watch where you are walking. Don't walk carelessly. But when it comes to things that are beyond you, that name is brought to bear. His name is his person. His name is his identity. The name of a man and him are the same. You can go anywhere. We can have a crowd of a thousand people. If you just shout any name, nothing will happen. Supposing inside that same place, you shout, Ronald. Well, there may be 20 Ronalds in that. They may turn their eye. But if you say, Ronald Shepard. Wow! There's only one person. The name is the man. Yeshua says, I am my name. And my name is me. When we understand this, we can use this key to influence things in the higher seat of government. We can use this key to influence things in the higher seat of parliament where laws are made. We can use it to influence things in the heart of those who sit in supreme courts. Governors, State legislators, mayors, council leaders, councillors, we can, literally speaking, with that name, open up their hearts to hear the will of the Father, knowingly or unknowingly, and to do his will. The keys of the name are still working. His key, another key includes the power of the blood. The blood can dissolve every faulty foundation of your life. The blood can dissolve every faulty foundation Arisen from your genealogy, the blood can dissolve everything, including your sins past, everything you ever did. And then you come to him by faith in his authority, in his name, and the power of his blood. There's a blotting out, and the Lord decorates you with his righteousness, right standing before the Father. And with the righteousness also comes justification, blots out your record that there's no record of sin. And that's what happens when you genuinely repent of anything you ever did. Anything, even as a believer, genuine, heartfelt repentance brings righteousness, right standing with the Father brings justification. And the church that understands the power of the blood will walk in the justification, not in the spots and wrinkles, but justification will make us to be the way Ephesians 5 describes. A church without spot or wrinkle. Radiant in glory, ready for the bride. 
the power of the blood. We are told in Hebrews, I mean in Revelation 12, verse 11, 10 to 12 also, it tells us the power of the blood is what we have to use to overthrow Satan. And of course, all the kingdom of darkness. So whether a throne on which a president sits is dedicated by the occult, by the, the masons and whatever they are, and they have dedicated them to different lodges or to powers of darkness, listen to this. The power of the blood in the mouth of a child of Elohim, no matter the age, can do wonders. The power of the blood can sanctify a capital of every negativity. It can sanctify a presidential palace, a house of assembly, anywhere, any place, in those who understand the dynamics of these things. The blood is still powerful as the day it was shed. It's still able to nullify every walk of darkness in any realm, in the heavenlies, on earth, under the earth, in the marine world. The blood can deal with it. And let's stop with these two keys today. Then he says, whatever his church binds on earth shall be bound in heaven. This is one of the authorities we are not excising. And whatever his church loses shall be loosed. So we can bind wickedness, we can bind indifference, we can bind coldness of heart, we can let loose compassion, mercy, we can let loose their capacity to, 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 to have empathy with the people upon those who are in authority. And brothers and sisters, in subsequent declarations, Yeshua defined his church in equally strong terms as catalyst of change and transformation that will coexist with the world, it is on assignment to innocent entry. We got to understand the principle. There is one edge, but there are different walls. You have the world where Satan rules because they are still under his influence as first John chapter 5, 19 to 21 says, the whole world lies under wickedness. Yeshua called him. He said, John 14, 30, the prince of this world, Comment and finds nothing in me. Yeshua in John 17 prayed to the Father. He said, I don't ask you to take up them out. No, they have work to do. Keep them in your own name. Keep them, Father, away from the wicked one. So the, I'm talking about the kingdom church that is kept away from the claws of the enemy. And you said to me, but these things have been preached by churches. The Father told me the reason why they haven't got effect is that when you are growing religious corporations, you can't take the fullness of the divine mandate. When you are growing religious empires, it won't happen. There'll be a little bit here and there because the name will always open doors. But not in the way when people who are believers and they are not denominating, they are not dividing according to race or gender or socioeconomic situation. They all see themselves as children of the Father who are placed on earth to do an assignment like the way the Lord wants to describe in the Global Prayer Spiritual Cabinet Project. Brothers and sisters, the Lord says when the church, as many as will connect with that revelation, they will begin to operate in the dimension of grace in which we have not seen before now. And he says it is necessary because it is part of the process of closing out the church age. The Lord has told us already in Matthew chapter 5 from verse, sorry, in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, the kind of church is coming for without spot, without wrinkle, radiant and glorious, beautiful, no sin, all the such things, spirit of disunity, poverty, Poverty of the mind and of the pocket and inability to do anything. This thing, he says there's a church rising across the earth rim. There's a church rising by his ordination. It's no man. That's why we dare not for any reason make it just IMF. No. Thank the Lord for international missus fellowship. Thank the Lord for the understanding he gave to us that the church is bigger than us. And we're saying to every network, if you know any network, send them this video. We're saying to every network, come alongside. Let's do it together. Come alongside. Let's connect. And it's not in organizational because what we're going to do is going to be individuals taking responsibility to pray for those who you are assigned to so that other people pray for other people. So in a nation, let's say America, let's say United Kingdom, do you know? America, how many members of House of Representatives? How many senators? There are 100 senators. How many representatives? 
when you take them, put them together, plus how many in the presidency, the president is the deputy the vice president, their spouses, then all the cabinet secretaries, then the nine justices of the Supreme Court, the court appellate courts and all that. What of the United Kingdom? We have Her Majesty the Queen and her family and her, you know, Prince, um, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip and the family. Then we have Prime Minister Boris Johnson, his spouse. And then we have the uh, special advisors, people like, the, you know, uh, 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 Cummings. And then we have all these cabinet secretaries, you know, secretaries in charge of home office, you know, finance, the chancellor of the exchequer, all the various secretaries, listen, and the parliament, there are 650 members of parliament, then the house of lords, I think with the latest addition is pushed to about 300, so can you imagine, legislators alone, they now talk about mayors in the various cities. They talk about, you know, council leaders. Talk about councillors in the various places. They are probably talking about anything between 1,500 or more that need to be prayed for. Not one network can pray for them. In the UK, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Jonathan Oloyo, Day of the Global Day of Prayer, National Day of Prayer, and say, you know what, brother, let's get involved. Other people, even Agui Ruku of the Redeemed, I'm going to send a note to him and say, brother, let's get involved. Let's pray. Let's pray. There's no one to take credit. Let's pray. This is not what any one person can do. Not one organization can do. Not one network can do. So, brothers and sisters, let's open our heart. This week, we're going to be breaking this down for everyone to hear. And remember, Thursday, by 10 o'clock GMT, or British Standard Time, that same time is 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Central Time, it is the same as 11 p.m. Um, South African time. It's the same as, you know, different, wherever you are, take your bearing from this. We will get on Zoom. We're going to actually to do a small poster with the, that praying hand and the Zoom details so we can post it across. Whenever you get it, distribute it. Whenever you get it, share it in groups. Let's get together. Let's take responsibility. For too long, we have given space to the world. And the world wants to even recruit us. We recruit us in their fashion. And Christians who wear the fashion of the world, they feel proud because you have a Hugo Boss, you have a you have a Gucci and all those stuff. You have a you know all kinds of things. We are glowing the label like the world. No, we have greater work to do. We have more serious work to do. And I say this to you, brothers and sisters. Let's get together. And if nobody else will pray, as for me and my house, we'll pray. And if we told our brethren, arise me to plan assembly in London. If no other person will pray in London, you take it up. All the 33 boroughs, let's divide it amongst self. All the the country, if nobody will pray, as for me and my house, Joshua said, will pray. And I want you to say the same thing. As for me and my house, will pray. Your family, your ministry. No, we are not asking people to come together. Mm -mm. Take responsibility for these five people, seven people, including leaders in the household of faith. You know, great leaders for those in IMF. Includes our global governing council members, our chairman, Dr. Koss and Dr. Adioli Lechuku, and other members of council like Apostle uh, Fred and um, Pastor Kathleen, Bishop Stafford, and, and Pastor Tina, Pastor Jerry Mann, Pastor Lees. They'll be prayed for. They'll be included in the global executive committee, uh, Teacher Stephanie, Apostle Catherine Jones, uh, Apostle Terence, and Apostle Victoria in the U.S., Apostle Colade in the U.K., Apostle uh, Apostle Abbott and Chimo Badei in Ireland, Apostle uh, Bishop Xavier and Prophet Audrey in South Africa, Apostle Mike and um, Pastor Jumoke in Nigeria, then uh, legal advisors, uh, Evangelist Veronica Kechi, uh, the Apostle uh, Pastor Ross and Prophet Rebecca Monioro, you know, the, the global executive that work with us and our special advisors, those who are assisting us, they'll be covered. And other leaders, people the Lord is using, will pray to cover them. People the Lord is using in a special way, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, advancing it. We're going to pray for them. And brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying, if not you, who will pray? Who will be in the spiritual cabinet? And if not now, when will it be? And I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. We are going to go in this during the week. 
I want to encourage you, wherever you may be, get involved. Let's pray. Let's pray and let's see the Lord move the nations. Let's see the Lord move cities. Let's see the Lord move states. Let's see the Lord exalt his church again, as we are going to see in these few days. We are trusting Elohim. He is going to bring forth what he wants to bring forth. I will say to you, you can sign up. If you are on this thread of conversation on this Facebook live stream, if you are for it, you know, I was so pleased to see a sister, a sister Josephine, who wrote on the thread, I walk in South Sudan, count me in. And I'm from Kenya, by your bed, count me in there. So you two can say, count me in. You write the country, you want to be counted in, and we'll get in touch with you, brothers and sisters, let's do it together. We are better together to the glory of the Father. And before we close, I mean, let me pray and I'll make some announcements. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. You are awesome in our midst. That which you want to do, we give you right of way. Go ahead. Do it for your name's sake. Empower us with understanding that we'll be on the same page, that your name may be glorified in Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, before any other announcement, I want to thank the Lord for Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda, uh, President of IMF USA, the, all the trustees and advisory council and executive committee for that beautiful conference they put up together over the weekend, and for Prophet Jeremiah and his wife, Pastor Britton and family, for all the labels. We thank you so much. We say, may the Lord bless you. IMF USA, you and IMF UK, you really rock. You've done beautiful by going virtual. Rather than postponing or saying, no, we won't be able to do it. No, this is the way to go. Ireland, IMF, go virtual. South Africa, if by next month it doesn't abate, go virtual. Zimbabwe, if by next month it doesn't abate, go virtual. Nigeria, September is your month, go virtual. Liberia, if it doesn't abate, Cote d'Ivoire, all of you, Kenya, Uganda, you know, Rwanda, all of you, Pakistan, India, go virtual. All, wherever you may be, Across the world, go virtual if the situation remains. That's the way to go. UK and USA have modeled it in July and in August. Now, let's not stop the flow of the Spirit. We thank the Lord. So Thursday, we're going to see you, but tomorrow we continue. And listen, if you have heard about the church, what the Lord will show you at this time is going to literally set you on fire. You will, know, you will refuse the false identity of religion and pick up the identity of the kingdom church. We have a few bad days today. Our sister Eber Omuye is a boy in Ireland. Today is a bad day. And that's wonderful vessel of the Lord, panting after the Lord, seeking after the Lord with all her heart. Today is a bad day. Happy bad day. Also, Apostle Francis Hillary Today is bad day, Martin Olowe here in London, Deborah Choi Lian, Robin Bray. Today is Robin Bray's bad day, Achibong uh, Bamidele, Shari Brooks, Odukoyo Samuel, Andreas Williams, Chosen uh, James, Stephen Villester, and Nancy Chechi. Today is their bad day. We're going to pray for them and we trust the Lord to, by His grace, lead us and guide us. And we thank the Lord for everything. Now let us uh, thank you, elect, for being on the camera and for the work you are doing, the Global Prayer Task Force. The Lord bless you indeed for all those designs and the work you are doing, setting up all those uh, um, uh, prayer groups. We bless the Lord for you.